In this video, you're going to learn how to add and subtract rational expressions. We're going to go through three examples, so see if you can follow along and practice some of these on your own as well. Remember when you were learning earlier in math how to add and subtract fractions? What was the key important thing to watch out for? Well, you want to make sure you get those denominators to be the same. Then you go ahead and combine them into uh, one fraction with that common denominator. So for example, in this problem here, you can see that the lowest common denominator would be 10. So in order to make this fraction have a denominator of 10, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. So this is going to give us 4 tenths plus 3 tenths is equal to 7 tenths. So you can see we keep that same denominator, we're just adding or subtracting the numerators. So similarly, with these rational expressions, we want to get a common denominator, but before we do that, you want to factor the denominators to see what they're made up of. So in this case, you can see that this is a difference of two perfect squares. So when we factor it, it's going to factor to x plus 4 and x minus 4. So I'm just going to cross this off for now. So this is our denominator. Over here, we have an x plus 4, but we don't have an x minus 4. So what I do is I look at both fractions and I say, well, what do I have? and what do I need so that they both have that common denominator. So in this case, in order to make this also have an x minus 4 in the denominator, whatever I multiply the denominator by, I also have to multiply the numerator by because anything divided by itself is 1. 1 times this fraction doesn't change the value, it's just going to change the way that it looks. So now you can see we have that common denominator of x plus 4, x minus 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine this into one fraction, just like we did over here, with that common denominator of x plus 4 times x minus 4. And then we're going to simplify here. So we have 2x minus 8 minus, and this is important here, we're subtracting. So it's this whole thing that's being subtracted, so minus the quantity x plus 3. So you want to put that in parentheses to treat it as a group. You can think of this as like a negative 1. It's a negative 1 times x and a negative 1 times 3. So let's simplify a little bit further here. We have 2x minus 8 minus 1x minus 3 all over the common denominator. And then all we have to do now is uh, combine like terms here. So we have 2x minus 1x, which is going to be x, negative 8 minus 3, which is negative 11, and that's all over our common denominator of x plus 4 times x minus 4. Now sometimes what happens is you might be able to factor the numerator and cancel the factors in the numerator with the denominator and reduce it down further, but in this case, this is as far as we can go. Okay, for example number two, if you feel like you're getting the hang of this, try to do this one on your own and we'll go through it together. So remember, the first step is really to factor the denominators and see what they're made up of. So let's go ahead and do that. What multiplies to negative 12 but adds to negative 1? Well, that's going to be negative 4 and positive 3. Now, if you need help with factoring, check out some of my Learn How to Factor videos. So now over here, we have a difference of two squares. So when we factor this one, it's going to factor as a sum and difference pattern. So x plus 3, x minus 3. So let's cross that out. When we look at both of these denominators, sometimes when you're doing this in your class, your teacher will refer to the LCD, the lowest common denominator, or the LCM, the least common multiple. And what exactly does that mean? Well, what it means when you're taking the least common multiple, ironically, you actually take what occurs the most, not the least. So if you say I've got one group of x plus 3 here and one group of x plus 3 here, you want to take what occurs the most. In this case, it's a tie, so you would just take 1x plus 3 as being needed for your denominator. You say I have 1x minus 3, no x minus 3s, so which one occurs more? The one, uh, the one group of x minus 3, so we need one of those. Same thing here, 1x minus 4, no x minus 4s, so you take the one that occurs more, we need 1x minus 4. And you go through all the factors like that, you know, for each group of the, each of the denominators, and you take the one that occurs not the least, but the most between the, the denominators here. I, the way I like to do it, though, is I just kind of like to look at it and see what I have and what I need. So I kind of say, okay, I've got an x minus 4 here. I don't have an x minus 4 here. So let me go ahead and multiply by what I'm missing, which is that x minus 4. Whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator to keep that fraction balance. It's like multiplying by 1. 
same thing. We can see that I've got an x minus 3 here. I don't have an x minus 3 here, so I need an x minus 3. If I multiply the denominator by x minus 3, I multiply the numerator by x minus 3. Now you can see we have the same denominator, so we're good to go ahead and combine them into one fraction and add the numerators. First thing I would do, though, is I would simplify here. So let's see, we've got 2x times x, which is going to give us 2x squared. 2x times negative 3 is a negative 6x. 1 times x is 1x, and 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Over here we have 3 times x minus 4, so that's 3x minus 12, and we're adding, so plus 3x minus 12, all over our common denominator, which is x minus 4, x plus 3, x minus 3. Now when you do this, your teacher will normally say, just go ahead and leave the denominator in factored form. You don't want to have to FOIL it all out. And part of the reason is, of, is that because if you simplify this and there's something that cancels numerator and denominator, you can simplify it down further. So that's why you'd want to leave this in factored form. But let's continue simplifying here. So we've got 2x squared. We've got negative 6x plus 1x is negative 5x plus 3x is negative 2x, and we have a negative 3 minus 12, which is negative 15. And that's all over, again, our common denominator. And what you want to look for is, can you factor this numerator further? Well, let's see, is there anything that multiplies to negative 30 and adds to negative 2? No, it doesn't look like it, so we can't factor it any further. So this is as far as I would take this particular problem and you've completed the addition of the two rational expressions. Let's take a look at one more example. So if you're liking the way that I explain things and you want to learn more about Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, check out the links in the description below to my Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 video courses for sale. And if you just want to support the channel, consider joining as a channel member. For a few dollars a month, you can support the uh, videos that I'm putting up here on YouTube, and I really appreciate it. But let's dive into example number three here. This one's challenging because it has three fractions. Again, we want to get a common denominator for all three. See if you can do this one on your own. It's a good practice problem. First thing, remember, is to go ahead and start by factoring the denominators as much as you can. Okay, so that's the first one. This one looks like it's already factored. And then this one here is a difference of two squares. So that's going to be x plus 1, x minus 1. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to look and see what do we need to do to get all these fractions to have the same denominator. Well, it looks like I have an x plus 3 here. I don't have an x plus 3 here or here. So let's go ahead and multiply this fraction by x plus 3 to the numerator and the denominator. Okay, same thing over here, x plus 3 to the numerator and denominator. And let's see what else we need. We've got an x minus 1 here, but we don't have an x minus 1 here, so we need an, an x minus 1. So let's multiply the numerator and denominator by x minus 1. Here we do have an x minus 1. Let's see, we've got an x plus 1, which this one over here does not have an x plus 1. This one does have an x plus 1. So let's go ahead and multiply the top and bottom here by x plus 1. Now when we look, it looks like we've got x plus 3, x minus 1, x plus 1 for all the fractions. So we have a common denominator. So what we can do now is we can combine these all into one fraction with that common denominator. First thing, though, is to go ahead and simplify these numerators. So let's do that. So we've got 3x squared, uh, let's see, plus 3x, plus 1x, plus 1. And then over here, let's see, I would probably multiply these together first. So this would be, uh, let's see, it would be x squared um, minus x plus 3x minus 3. And then that whole thing is multiplied by 4. And notice with this minus sign. So this is where sometimes students go a little bit off track. So one way to do this is you could think of this as a negative 4 and then distribute the negative 4. So I'll do that in this case. So this is going to be negative 4x squared, a positive 4x. Negative 4 times positive 3x is negative 12x. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. You can see this is a big problem, right? And then over here, we're adding 5x plus 15. And it's all over that common denominator. But let's go ahead and simplify this numerator here first. So we've got 3x squared 
and negative 4x squared, which comes out to negative 1x squared. We've got 3x plus 1x is 4x plus another 4x, that's 8x, uh, minus 12x, which is a negative 4x, plus 5x is 1x. Okay, and then we've got 1 plus 12 is 13, plus 15 is 28, all over our common denominator of x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 3. And you want to ask yourself, can you factor this numerator further? Is there anything that multiplies to negative 28 but adds to positive 1? No. So that's as far as we can go on this one, and you got it. So if you want to see more examples, you want more practice, I'll put a link to another video I did right there talking about how to add and subtract rational expressions. Follow me over that video. We'll get some more practice.